Right, let's go. Right, so let's you're gonna go, do you're gonna, go. gonna do the, you're gonna do the intro. Do it nice like I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do. All right then, let's go. Greetings, EastEnders fans. Welcome to your weekly podcast, Albert Square After Dark, where we'll be discussing in the goings on in EastEnders this week between the dates of the 11th of September and the 14th of September 2023. How are you all? Are you okay? Has everyone cooled down after the heat wave if you've been in the UK? I hope so, because we needed to cool down, didn't we? And to discuss all the EastEnders going on and the weather, probably, mm. is my hurt co host, Rob. How are you, Rob? Do you know, that was like, it was like I was in the room. I was just watching myself do that then. Oh, that was beautiful. That's so professionally nice. done. So professionally oh, done. You. Ladies and gentlemen, let us tell you where we have got, what we have had to go through to even get to this point this week. All right. You've, Technology. You've, you've got no idea. No idea. Technology just didn't want to work for us this week. It didn't want to tell us why it wasn't working. It didn't want to give us any alternatives. It didn't want to explain to us how we could possibly fix the problems it was presenting to us. It didn't even want to tell us what the problems were. It just no. didn't want to work. So we've been at this for a good hour. So I'm on a different laptop. That's how that's bad it's how ba- been. Yep, that's I'm how on a different are. laptop. Rhea's had to change her laptop for us to get to this point. <laughs> so I've had all to in all. One. Yeah, all anyway, in all, I marvelous. hope you appreciate it though, because it's been quite something setting up what this, we go this through. morning, hasn't it? What yeah. we go through for our beautiful listeners and viewers, I'll tell I you know. now. But that was then. This is now. Let's talk mm-hmm. about this week's EastEnders, shall we? Because it was a very, oh, very yes. exciting week. Oh, yes. Let's do it. <laughs> So we shall start this week, ladies and gentlemen, with discussing Stacy, Theo, and Lily. We saw Theo at the end of the week as Stacy discovered who her next door neighbour from hell is. But most of this week's uh, with the Slaters concerned Lily and her looking after baby Charlie XCX. And you get the impression, I think, that Lily's already done with this, <laughs> don't you? I think you know it's. I don't blame her. It's hard. No. Yeah. I can't imagine been... doing it when you're 13. I was going to ask you this because you know you're you're a, I know you're a good mother. I know you're a good mother because you've given me lot. I've seen this kid. She is healthy. She is fun. She's she's, she's a happy alive. child. She's very. She's, <laughs> she's still fed. alive. She's fed. You give her food. You give her water, and she laughs and stuff. So your kid is absolutely fine. But she's got she's going through just a stage at the moment, like kids go through at that age. And I was going to ask you, like, can you imagine doing everything you're doing now when you were 13? Not at all. This is why I'm wondering, like, obviously last week we were talking about is it going down the personal depression route? Yeah. Now this week I'm like, I think Rob was right. She was just scared <laughs> about being a new mom. You yeah, hate Rob's that, right. don't you? Yeah, you yeah, hate yeah. that I when I'm absolutely right. absolutely hate it. I love it when I'm right. I hate oh, it Oh, God, yeah. Right. And I hate it when well, yeah. you're right. So that's all fine. Yeah, then, exactly. Though, oh, well, Every- then, yeah. Everything is as it should be. Uh, We're a great team. <laughs> <laughs> works beautifully. <laughs> But do you yeah, know what it is? I, you lot have made us competitive with each other. Oh, yes. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah that's, what, I that's agree what it with does. That. That's what it does. A lot um, of you have got, I've had my back there, so thanks. Yes, too many, for my, too many for my liking. But uh, there we are. So, yeah, so Lily is struggling this mm. week. And so um, she she has to say to Stacey at, this, at some point this, at the start of the week, right, can you just, because Stacey's sort of taking over a little bit, isn't she? Which mm. you can understand, can't you, I think? Because she's basically watching this child trying to look after a baby, essentially. And it's 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 tricky for Stacey, I think. I understand both points of view, but I do think Stacey's been overstepping the line. Plus, when you're mm. a new mum, you're quite sensitive to comments and feeling like you're not doing it right anyway. I bet. So for then somebody to come in and make you feel like that because they're just taking over and not letting you actually... I mean, really, Lily should be in control with Stacey just watching and saying, oh, maybe do that, actually, because, you know, maybe Mm. give her a little burp now. Yeah. Rather than just going, right, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that. I can... I totally get why Lily were feeling a bit disheartened. Mm. So, yeah, she needed to chill out. Well, she Lily turns around to Stacey and goes, look, just leave me alone, all right? I can do this. So Stacey agrees to go to do a shift at the van for a couple of hours. And in that two hours, Lily decides, Lily and Ricky decide to take out uh, baby Charlie XCX uh, to see Denzel, Nuggets, Amy and everyone. And after they've done a few obligatory selfies, because that's what kids do, the, the new toy, essentially, with this baby, isn't it? Um, they decide that they want to go viral on TikTok. Now, I have seen these videos before. Um, it's never quite really occurred to me that they it is in a sense maybe it's a little bit cruel to a baby to just like stuff a lemon in their mouth and make them react to it, you know, because <laughs> you do get those sorts of videos. 
Um, the idea of making her lick a crisp. I, I, I mean, is this bad? Well, is it as I bad think... as... Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. The newborn should not be licking a crisp. <laughs> That's, like, horrendous. That is literally... I mean, Jack, when he obviously saw what happened, he did overreact saying, you know, salt can kill a baby, yeah. A lick or a crisp ain't going to do that no. much. It could have upset... It could definitely have upset her tummy quite a bit, though, at that age, but... Mm-hmm. I think the videos you're describing online, the babies are probably a lot older as well, which they've not yeah. understood. I mean, this this kid's only like a week old so far, isn't it? So maybe it's a little bit early in its life to become a viral superstar I because mean, of a reaction my to kid, a crisp. My kid actually loves sucking lemons, and I'm not even joking. So, and, and may I ask I how you dis- video it? May I ask how you discovered that? Was that whilst you were trying to make her go viral at one week old? <laughs> no, it was not. Funnily Two enough. weeks old. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, pretty bad. Pretty. I were, I were actually watching it like, oh my god. But what's worse, I think, is it looked like Lily knew she shouldn't do that, and she got peer, pressured, peer pressure into it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And this is the problem, and this is where we're at. This is where Lily is at. It's the fact that you give you get constant reminders how young these parents actually are, how mm-hmm. young her and Ricky actually. I mean, Ricky at one point was actually wondering whether it was possible for baby Charlie XCS's <laughs> eyes to change color like Thor. That's where he's at, all right? That is his stage of life at the moment. So, oh, no, they do. They, their eyes do uh, change colour, Rob. Not like Thor, they don't. As far uh, as I'm aware. Oh, saying one will be a different colour uh, yeah. to the other, you mean? Well, no, that does happen David sometimes. Bowie. David Bowie. David Bowie. Yeah. There you go. But, I th- yeah, but not to the point where it's like a superhero, I suspect. Oh, right. No, 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 no. Um, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I mean. This is where these kids are at. Like, they're kids, mm. all right? They're doing kid stuff. They want to, like, talk about, like other, like, other kids stuff with other kids and not have this baby here to sort of kind of running running the bridge running it the ship essentially because lily now has to concentrate all her attention on this baby and i think she is starting to feel overwhelmed by it all mm-hmm. and it's only been a week <laughs> it's like and jack has to point out to her at one point you know this baby isn't a toy and that is i think the key thing in it i think that's what all the other kids were like oh this is new this is a new thing for us to play with a baby let's do things with the baby and all the baby can do is lie there and just have done to it whatever they decide to do to it which is the slightly worrying thing Mm, very just do it just anyone out there just don't feed a crisp to a newborn no. although jack was right that she could have choked on it as well yeah anyway thank god jack turned up when he did right yeah well indeed um of course though jack is doing his jack thing which i kind of predicted last week i kind of figured that jack was going to go into this mode where he was going to go into overprotective running grandfather mode uh he hasn't quite demanded that lily go um that charlie goes and lives with them yet but i suspect once he finds out that theo has moved next door that will be the cue to him barging in and basically saying that the baby isn't safe at the Slaters. Yeah, I mean, after this incident's happened and he's had a go at Stacey, you know, about leaving him on their own, he does end up bumping her, bumping into her, doesn't he, at Minute Mart and say, no, you're a good mum, because yeah. Stacey were like, oh, oh, like, surprised. Taken aback that said something <laughs> surprised like that he's that. actually so, complimenting yeah. her. Yeah, I mean, the thing it's is... a bit too good. The thing that you always have to remember, I think, in this sort of situation is that if... If you're a mother who thinks that they're not a good mother and and is worried about the fact that you're not a good mother, that automatically makes you a good mother because you are worried about your child's welfare. You know, it makes you a better mother than some mothers that don't care, you know, but that never enters your head, I think, in that situation. But I think Lily could be doing with being told that. Like the fact that you Mm -hmm. are this worried about about your own capabilities means that you want her to be okay. So that makes you automatically an all right mother. You know, it's... Yeah, definitely. Bless her. But... When you're sleep deprived and your hormones are going all over, she's not mm-hmm. going to be thinking like that, is she? No. I think she's been doing a really good job from what we've seen, other than the crisp incident. Other than the crisp incident, yes. Yeah. And she's, she's. I mean, how do you learn to do this? This is the thing. Like, it's all right. You could go to as many prenatal classes as you like as during pregnancy and have as much support around you as you possibly like. But it's about you learning about what you and the baby have to do together and the connection that you have to have together and like learning how to change nappies and all of that kind of thing and constantly wait being woken up at three o'clock in the morning with a screaming baby and what you have to do with them it's beyond stressful i cannot imagine anything i'd rather do less <laughs> it's like it's well not my thing i've got some advice for anyone who is thinking about having kids out there don't is it the no <laughs> Is that where you're at right now? You don't try the nose trick enough. That's your problem. <laughs> Have you tried the nose oh, trick? Oh, yeah, clearly. I tried it when she was a newborn. Didn't work. Didn't, didn't work. work. See, the thing is, I can imagine, once Jean gave that advice to Lily, there were young parents all over the UK accidentally poking their babies in the eye as they tried to sort of stroke the noses of his wriggling oh, baby. Yeah. Or babies being taken to A&E all over the country because of this week's <laughs> yeah, episodes. Poking them blind yeah. in one eye. Anyway, so 
this is this is okay. I think Stacey by the end of the week gets uh, sort of gets the message that she needs to just back off a little bit and let Lily do her thing. And Jean's there, so everything is okay in the Slater household until she goes outside and realizes who her new next door neighbor is because Theo is just standing there complimenting her on the fact that she took the right bin out. And Stacey is obviously horrified by this and runs inside and closes the door. I don't believe Theo thinks he's doing anything wrong. That's the problem. No, I think. he's very delusional, isn't he? He says, oh, we got off on the wrong foot, so I thought I'd move <laughs> in next door. That's the worrying thing, isn't it? That was the scariest clue. thing, is that he doesn't, he genuinely believes that they've got this connection. But then, yeah. then how, how do you go from, how do you go to that? And then he's like, obviously avoided her for a week. Did he think it'd be a nice surprise for her? That he's I genuinely, yeah. Or I something? think, I think he thought that she would be absolutely delighted and realise how dedicated he is to her. And be like, do you know what? I got the wrong idea about you. You breaking into my house and tearing up all my clothes. That was just a sign to show you how to show me how much you loved me. I'm an, I, I'm ridiculous. It must be the stress of the newborn that's not making me see the mm. situation clearly enough. Where does it go from here? Like, what do, what is his next move? Do you think? I don't know because I didn't think it could get any worse as, <laughs> as it's been surprise. progressing, and it keeps <laughs> surprise. It keeps getting worse and worse. I actually don't know. I I mean, is it going to be? We're cup against wall, trying to we'll listen to everything. I we'll mean, that's not the worst thing he could do, is it? I don't... The worst that we've ever oh. seen in EastEnders, I think, was when Leo was stalking Whitney and he got into her attic oh, yeah. and remember the oh eye looking God, down looking eye. down yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was like insanely creepy. Theo hasn't done that quite yet, but then Leo never moved next door. So I can imagine like Theo like drilling a hole into the wall and just like staring at Stacey throughout it or something. Oh. I was just thinking, what if he can like create some kind of tunnel? That can go through the houses or something, or he's like going to drill up, drill a little door or something. I don't know. Stop, stop poopering on my theories. I'm not Rob. poopering on your poo poopering, poo pooing your theories. Pooping. I'm not doing that either. <laughs> um, no, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, next week when when I Theo. I don't know where else it's going to go. Where else can it go? I actually so, don't have a clue. I mean, I think what is going to happen next is that I think Jack's now going to say, right, well, this is ridiculous. Your baby is... I mean, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to move this child two doors away from me <laughs> instead of just being deliberately next door to him. So mm -hmm. it's... Yeah, Jack's going to get involved and Jack's going to try and take over is my next prediction. What Theo does from here, I have no idea. Because yeah, that's what I mean. What's the, the guy's a nutter? The guy is an absolute nutter. And this is the thing. This is the interesting thing. Is the fact that everybody knows who Theo is now. Now, like, there's nobody that's still on his side. There's nobody mm. kind of not believing what Stacey's saying. Like they all are fully aware who he is, what he is, and what he's been doing. So how he gets away with whatever he's about to try next, I do not know. Mm. The only thing I can think is: is he going to like poison her so that she thinks that she's having a kind of you know, manic episode or so. That's the only thing I can think yeah. of that he might do because he's mentioned a mental health so that people yeah, start doubting knows. it. I don't know. Mm. Time will tell. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, next story. <laughs> On to Alfie, Cat, Phil and the return of Emma this week. Uh, pleased to see Emma again? What do you think? Meh, indifferent. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's caused some nice drama, I guess. Hasn't I she just... Have... Mm, Hasn't I could have equally just... not seen her again, though, if I'm honest with you. But I mean, I think it's. I th I've. I, to be fair, I've enjoyed. I've sort of enjoyed her this week because she's a bit of a hoot. I have to say because okay. she's just so delusional about what you know and the drama that she managed to cause. I think she's kind of just walked in and quite quickly worked out like how easy it is to manipulate these people. The only person she's having difficulty with really is Ben. Uh, mm. So. Emma, what we discovered this week, but we'll talk about Ben and Emma later on because that's a separate thing because it kind of branched out into two places. It's as if this era doesn't want to make it easy for me to write notes. You know, that seems to be its I key know. aim these days, honestly. Um, so Emma has returned, but the, most of this week regards uh, Kat, Alfie and Phil because Kat discovers exactly what secrets have been hidden from her this week. First of all, she discovers the incident with Tommy a few weeks ago where he lashed out at Alfie. Because she senses that something is wrong with Alfie. So she manages to, dra to drag that out, out of him. When she discovers that Phil had been keeping the Tommy stuff from her, she storms into the kitchen and starts having a go at Phil, who misinterprets that to understand that she's just found out about the cancer thing. So he says that, and then Kat knows everything, and she's even more angry. <laughs> like, yeah. Phil's so useless with women. He re You'd have thought, after all the women that Phil's had in his entire life, he'd be able to read them slightly better. No, he is dyslexic when it comes to women. It's it's he is. Oh, that's a very good way of putting it, actually. Yeah, he is. Thanks. Mm. But um, I mean, I th I don't know. I think Pat were a bit out of order to be so mad at Phil about did it. Did you? It weren't yeah, it weren't Phil's secret. If Alfie said something in I thought this 
Yeah. And then it's meant that it's meant that Alfie's gone and actually got some help from it because he's managed to confide in Phil and he's, you know, promising to keep it confidential. Yeah. Then Kat's a bit out of order, actually. If anything, she should be sort of thanking Phil for being there for Alfie in her absence, you know, because if it wasn't because yep. if it wasn't for Phil, Alfie would never have gone to got checked out. Exactly. So but yeah, I mean, I can sort of understand like, well, why didn't you tell me at all? But to be as yeah. angry as she was, if anything, I think just demonstrated to Phil how upset she was, she was at the prospect of Alfie not being in her life. Yeah, that's true. That's how he's then interpreted it. Mm. Yeah, which results in which what we were discussing in a moment. But I want to talk about the fact that when Alfie, Cat, and Phil, they all went to the hospital for Alfie to get his official sort of checkup and test results and all that kind of thing. He went in on his own. Then came out and yes. claimed that he was he was he'd had the all clear. I don't mm-hmm. think we believe this, do we? No, not one bit. That was the no. first thing I thought. Like, well, if we've not if we've not seen the doctor say it ourselves, then he's clearly not been given the all clear. And he he came out with tears in his eyes, but tried yeah. to make it look as though like tears, of, tears happiness. of yeah. Yeah, but I don't think they were. No. I mean, disregarding the fact for us for the simple fact that they made a big announcement about this storyline that they were doing a prostate cancer storyline with Alfie. Suggests yeah, to me that I'm they not. wouldn't have made that big announcement if this was all the story was going to be. And it was just merely yeah. a tool to mess Cat and Phil up a little bit. You know, it's... And they're talking about, you know, then later in the week, he obviously says, oh, I've got all these... I feel like I've been given this new lease of life and I want to go kayaking and do all this. And it's like, is that a bucket list, Alfie? Uh, that sounds more like a bucket list to me, yeah. Yeah, which is obviously why I think he then... Obviously, I'm skipping ahead a bit and then he says he's going on holiday. That... That just cemented it even more to me that he's definitely mm. not got the all clear that he's no. going on holiday. Exactly. So I think we're very much in agreement. Alfie is definitely lying about this. And we should be yes. discovering that, I think, in the next couple of weeks, sort mm. of. But he's, he's clearly planning on just going all through all this on his own because, I mean, I don't think he's he's received a terminal diagnosis or anything, but I think it's enough He it's enough to him to say, right, you have prostate cancer and that has just completely and utterly derailed him. So he doesn't know how to deal with it. And he doesn't want anybody else involved because he's worried about like how he doesn't want to like mess up the boys' lives and Kat's life and, and everything like that. You know, it's... Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. I think it's the obviously bumped into Lexi and Ben didn't getting on tube. And I think that gave mm-hmm. him that moment of realisation that I don't Children. want to put Bert and Ernie through it. Yeah. And I don't want that. And he said, didn't he? You know, I don't want them looking at me with sympathy and stuff. So, yeah, I think that's yes. what he's lying about it. Mm. Yeah, so we'll find out what goes on with Alfie in the coming weeks, I think. So, meanwhile, obviously, all of this has put Cat and Phil right on the rocks. Uh, and they're just, but Kat's just furious, livid with Phil for keeping all of this from her to the point where she's kind of like, I don't even know if I want to marry you anymore. And Phil decides to take refuge in Peggy's bar, Ch- sends Chelsea yeah. home. And it, I don't know what Phil was actually planning on doing in the bar. Like, did he just want to be alone? Was he going to drink? Or, you know, that's. This is what I, I wondered this. Why did he go there? And then, I, and then it, obviously, with what later happened, I was like, was he drinking? That seems like a I'm drunk thing to do. But obviously, we didn't see that he was drinking. And I think yes. we would have seen some clues of that but yeah what but was he planning on doing? it kind of makes you wonder why did he want to go to peggy's and be there on his own like obviously mm. he was going there to sort of sulk essentially mm. but you do kind of wonder what was your actual plan there philip um but emma fresh from like having a massive ben having had a massive go so which we'll get to in a minute she comes into the bar and the pair of them start talking and i have to say i'm not entirely sure how we ended up where we ended up with these two like what did what happened between them that made them think right actually now i need to sleep with you immediately on that office sofa off you go go on <laughs> like how did that happen they clearly they clearly just have some kind of chemistry together Rob, because i didn't see that happening yeah well i think you know she kept saying we're the kind of people that mess up and all that stuff she was trying to say like we're we're the same person really aren't we and when you look back at phil's history she kind of fits the bill of the kind of oh she does that he, like oh especially yeah. if it's a an affair type of scenario as well uh, visually definitely well i mean look at sharon yeah. and the, look at sharon look at cat and now look at emma you know uh yeah it's, i was thinking um what were Max Brannan, Susie Brannan? She reminds me a bit of her. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, Susie. Um, Susie bring, bring Susie back. She <laughs> was an absolute scream. I loved Susie. Um, so, yeah, Phil and Emma end up having sex uh, in that office, which I swear to God, so many people have had sex in that office. So many people have had sex in that office now. It's basically turned into a brothel, that office. And I swear to God, there's still a security camera in there, but, you know, you could sell the contents of that security camera on it. Yeah, and you could sell the contents of that security camera on OnlyFans and probably make quite a bit of money. 
You may have just made a very good point there, Rob, because Chelsea turned the camera off a few weeks ago. So is somehow this Ooh. footage going to appear? Possibly. Is Chelsea going to find it or someone? Maybe. Oh. Well, to be fair, I think Phil has got enough on it on his plate with the fact that enough people seem to be blackmailing him. The next, you know, the next morning, he's obviously full of regret. Emma isn't. Emma's had the time of her life, which if we kind of look back on some of the people that Phil has had sex with over the years, I'd regard Tracy as a good reference point to this, who described <laughs> Phil as the best sex she's ever had. I we can only presume that Emma had the night of her life on that sofa. Because the next morning, she is striding through the square. An absolute strut on her. The stride of pride. Never mind the walk of shame. She is loving life. Yeah. Um, and, well, I think, you know, not only has she had a good time, but she also knows that now she's definitely got something that's going to help her in her quest to get access to Lexi. Um, and Phil kind of desperately tries to do his thing, like tries to be a bit of a grunt about the whole thing. Like, you can't tell anyone. It doesn't really work. Because Emma basically turns around and goes, well... You get me access to Lexi, or I'm going to tell Cass everything. Up to you. <laughs> what was Phil thinking? I don't know. He weren't worried. That's the no. that's the thing. He weren't thinking. Classic Phil, really. I mean, literally classic Phil. Yeah. He weren't thinking. Well, we're thinking with one thing only. Yes, he that. was talking. Of, he was thinking with Mini Phil, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I mean, the other the other side of this, of course, is that Sharon, who can read Phil like a book automatically works out there's something wrong with him and quite rapidly comes to the conclusion, oh, you've cheated on Kat, haven't you? That's exactly what's going on here. Uh, and then due to some furtive looks in the Vic, soon works out exactly who with. I mean, Sharon's just perception here was incredible. I know. On that note, by the way, what was the guy called? Dorian? Who was... Dorian, yeah. This What's presumably, all this about? Yeah, this presumably is going to be something that looks gets looked at a bit more next week. So this guy called Dorian has turned up and I think he wants... Like, George has brought him in and he's potentially like a new partner for the boxing ring and he's got ideas on how to branch out. And at some point he mentions to Sharon that she has the opportunity to go to Abby Dabby of Abby all Dabby, places. Yeah. Why? Why Abby Dabby? To, because to he kind said, of be a... well, he lived there and he said that they're crying out for gym managers, he said. So an opportunity for Sharon there, perhaps, that I don't believe she's going to take, but it's something going on there. It's a bit random of all. Now I'm, well, now I'm like, is he linked to Christmas Day somehow? Because I don't understand he's on the where floor. he's just come Dorian's from. It's him, it's Dorian. Dorian's on the but floor. But I don't, I don't understand. Length. Anyway, like you said, maybe we'll see a bit more next week. Uh, yeah, I think it was just... What that were. Yeah, I feel like there was enough going on this week. They just sort of introduced him. We'll discover more about Dorian next week to sort of see what Mm. the crack is there. Um, So, yeah, by the end of the week, Phil is kind of threatening Emma and saying, you know, but I don't, I feel like Emma's very definitely got the upper hand here, hasn't she? And of course, he's not the only one black, she's not the only one blackmailing Phil because Keanu, meanwhile, is still cannot get through to Lisa. Uh, So he, in an uncharacteristically clarified moment works out what's gone on between Phil and Emma because he kind of catches like I think he kind of catches Sharon and Phil's conversation and then realizes that Emma's definitely involved and then he catches Emma alone in the cafe and goes right do you want to tell me what's going on with Phil and then Emma just clearly tells him so she's not that bothered about keeping this secret um and then Keanu goes to Phil and goes yeah so you need to get me access to my daughter otherwise I'm going to tell everyone about what I've just discovered about Emma so Phil's in a bit of a pickle at the moment isn't he well, I don't know what we were expecting to happen. I mean, no. what is going to happen? Because then he's, he's then he turns it around, doesn't he, on Emma, and says, "Well, if you tell I... Kat, I'll tell Lexi." And it's like, uh, what's I the, don't yeah? Know. Who's gonna who's gonna have their life destroyed? No, not really. I mean, who's gonna have their life destroyed more by this? Is Lexi going to be that devastated the fact that her mum's uh, that her nan slept with her granddad? As opposed, oh to... no, he was saying no, no. Phil was saying he'll tell Lexi that she broke Lola's heart and that what really happened because I don't think Lexi knows exactly why Emma left no I mean I think that's what he was saying he was going to tell her Uh, but even still I don't think I I don't think that Phil has as much of an upper hand as he'd like to think he has there at all Um, and of course what we've also discovered this week is that Kat and Phil are apparently getting married next week oh yeah this came out of the (laughs) blue in the mix because I thought that they'd agreed to get married at Christmas which was kind of yeah, confusing same. with Sharon, which is kind of confusing with Sharon being in the wedding dress for the flash forward. Could be kind of like, well, haven't we just been told that Kat and Phil were getting married at Christmas? So this has been brought forward. Mm. So we don't know. We still don't know what the hell is going on with Sharon in a wedding dress if her and Keanu aren't together at the moment. It's all it's all madness. Well, I think I think they brought it forward because didn't this, they were going around looking for Christmas time and then didn't her or someone's had a cancellation. So I've took yeah. It. 
yeah. that's it, registry officer called. So, yeah. Does that mean that we're going to have a divorce again by Christmas as well? Probably. I mean, are we going to get Cat Mitchell? Is it going to get that far? Or is it? Yeah, that's true. Mm. Or I suspect that this secret isn't going to last very long. I think this might all come out in quite cataclysmic fashion next week. Well, didn't um, didn't Pat and Alfie get married on Christmas Day when they first when they got married? Many men. I think so. Many a yeah. moon ago. <laughs> many a moon ago. Oh, get uh, you, uh... get you. This is why you do this. Um, <laughs> yes. So interesting. We'll see where this goes next week. Uh, but I think it's all going to come out in a quite explosive fashion. Let us know in the comment section below how you think this is all going to tie into Christmas. I mean, the the wedding drama. It's why is Sharon in a wedding dress on the flash forward? That's the thing that's confusing me most of all. Because know. it seems that her and Keanu aren't a thing anymore. So who is she getting married to? Dorian. Dorian. It's definitely Dorian on the floor Christmas Day. We've solved the mystery. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Right then, next story. <laughs> so it's not just Phil that Emma is causing problems for. Uh, Lexi has been texting someone. And as we correctly theorised last week, it does turn out to be Emma. Um, it does seem, though, that she has been confiding in Emma quite a lot about some stuff that's been going on at school, to the point where mm. I feel like even you were right last week when you said that she might have been bullied, so she's managed to make herself enemies in her first week at school. That's our girl. <laughs> that's a Mitchell I girl. I mean, that's what kids are like as well, though, isn't it? Kids fair, are evil. So... Kids are evil. They are. They are. So, you know, they are evil to the point where they're, she's apparently got some girl called Millie turning around to her and saying, oh, you're not, you're an orphan. Aha, uh-huh, you're an orphan. Lol. Like, uh, kids are awful. Horrific are they, No, they are. I can imagine some kids saying that yeah. as well. Well, they're not all awful, but some really are. They really are. <laughs> also, when she said um, someone got done for piercing someone's ears in toilets. What, are year sevens doing that? Are you mad? Won't be surprised. All we ever used to do in the toilets was have secret cigarettes, wasn't it? Remember yeah. those days? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I had all, yeah. I had loads of I had loads of girl mates at school, and I used to get dragged into the got dragged into their loos. Did I you? Thought, oh, I was such a rebel. That's nice. That's really nice, though. I like that. It was very bonding. Very bonding. Anyway, yeah. um, so <laughs> Emma turns up at the flats, <laughs> like just and Ben is unsurprisingly furious at this. Goes insane at her. Emma has the nerve to look somewhat surprised by this. Um, but she has been in contact with Lexi and you kind of get the impression that she is definitely around to stay because Lexi is delighted to see her. Um, Callum decides to try and help out the situation because he's slightly concerned that because Ben has his uh, first bulimia counselling session coming up, he doesn't want to distract away from that and he wants Ben to focus on that. So he decides to mm. deal with the Emma situation. And what I loved about this was the fact that when he arranged to meet Emma in the Vic, he could have sat anywhere in the Vic absolutely oh, yeah. anywhere but he decided yeah. to position himself right next door to lola's picture on the bar <laughs> well you know maybe a little uh, reminder to her of what she did i don't know but yeah I, very good point very all good places he could have sat. It's like, all right there callum you've been master manipulator didn't see that in your trait in your character traits very interesting uh but ben does catch them in the vic together and it still goes mad so callum decides to uh allow Lola, uh, not Lola, uh, Lexi and Emma to see each other without Ben knowing. This won't go well, will it? This isn't going to end well. Why? I don't understand why you think... Well, I do understand, because obviously Kathy has a word with him earlier in week and says, you know, maybe it's better for Lexi if she wants to see her nan. So I think that's what puts the idea in Callum's head and he thinks, you know, I'm the more impartial person in the situation. Mm. So maybe I'm doing what I deem is best for Lexi, but... Still, he shouldn't have done it, should he? Like, surely Callum knows that as well. Like, he I mean, shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have agreed to it. The thing is, I think this is Callum trying to sort of take a, a role in what's going on because, mm. you know, he's, Lexi's got Ben and Jay and they're very much like the dads in the situation. And I think Callum, like, feels like he is part of that because like, cause Lexi yeah. even refers to them as having three dads this week. So it's not like yeah. Callum is being necessarily pushed out of the situation. Yeah. But you kind of feel that, you know, Ben could be a little bit like nicer to him about the whole situation as well couldn't he like he sometimes just yeah. tells Callum like shut up you don't know what you're talking about or so you know he'll just say something kind of quite derogatory so I think Callum is basically trying to try his best and help the situation a little bit mm, yeah just not still... doing a great job at it <laughs> no I think I think as well considering she's only just come back Emma he could have maybe waited a little bit longer before saying yeah go on then I'll let you secretly meet Lexi but again you shouldn't be encouraging kids to have secrets although 
Did he tell Lexi, oh, you're not to tell your dad that you've met up with her as well? Because I mean, then it'd be wrong. That'd yeah, be but wrong. yeah, I mean, but the thing is, he's not the only person that does this. Phil does this as well this week. So Emma mm. gets two meetings with Lexi this week and Lexi loves it. Lexi's pleased to have her nan back in her life. That's the killer point for, for them, I think. The fact that Lexi mm. wants her in her life because it's a good connection to Lola for her. Gives her a bit of normality to have this sort of motherly figure in her life. Yeah, and sometimes grandparents try to make up for the mistakes they made with their own children with grandchildren. That's exactly so you kind of see it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, and I mean, but Emma's obviously you know not really interested in being part of their immediate family. She wants to do this very much on her own because she even suggests to Lexi, "Oh, how about we have a little trip to Paris?" (laughs) Like, how does that grab you? So she's quite happy Mm. to sort of go under the radar and just maybe even take Lexi away from them at some point. So. It's, it's all going to get very messy. I think, to be honest, I think she's very entitled considering how she did leave things with Lexi. And I think it's all still a bit too raw to be coming in. Maybe mm. she should have played the long game, Emma, and carried on secretly texting Lexi rather than yeah. getting directly involved. I mean, the thing is, we know Emma is, can be a bit of a manipulator. You know, she was mm. doing this when Lola was alive and she was trying to just kind of get rid of Jay. Um, oh, yeah, of course. So... Yeah. You sort of wonder exactly how much of Lexi's welfare she's actually, whether she's actually kind of putting mm. Lexi's Lexi first in the situation, or whether she's just trying to make herself feel better about not being there for Lola at the yeah. end. Mm, so definitely, maybe a bit of yeah. I don't, th- I don't feel like she's got Lexi's best interests at heart. Otherwise, she wouldn't no. have gone about how the way that she has with things. I so. mean, she's been on the square. She's been back on the square for a week. She's already had sex with Phil, so. Oh, yeah. it's, talk, so about, she's, talk about a complicated family tree. If you the, think if you've got was, problems. You know what I mean? Wow. You think you've got problems. Look at the Mitchells and just thank yeah. yourself. Thank your lucky stars you are not a part of that family. Um, so where do we go from here, do you think? Do you reckon, what do you reckon Emma's next move is? Is she going to be the one that reveals everything at the wedding or is that going to be Keanu? Is that going to... I, I were actually thinking it might be Keanu who did that. Now that you mentioned the footage as well, I was wondering, oh, is Keanu somehow going to get hands on the footage? I don't know. Is I there still being a doorman there? I don't know if that footage is going to play very much. I don't know yeah. if that footage is going to play much of a role. I think it's just the fact that we've seen that there is because yeah, we know that we know that we know that's come into play before because it went, it happened all those years ago when Hunter and Louise had sex in there, and then Hunter sent Phil the footage. So we know oh, that there's yeah. a oh, yeah, yeah. So we know that there's a camera in there. So we know that that camera has been used for this sort of purpose before, mm. but it's whether they remember but it. Whether it there's will. a camera. Yeah, exactly. I think there's yeah. enough people that know about what's going on to cause mm. the, their own drama without the camera even having to come into play, I think. Possibly would be Emma then, because she doesn't seem like she'd really care. Like, no, not at all. About the consequences of it all. So yeah, will the wedding even go ahead? Also, is Emma going to move on to the square? Because there's a lot of properties coming up for rent here, there and everywhere at a minute, aren't there? So... I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. And she is smack bang in the middle of the credits. This is always something to keep an eye on with a character. Ah. She's smack bang in the middle of the credits, so she's not on the end as a guest character. Like, she's mm. it, with, with all the regular characters, like Theo is. So, presumably, they're both around still for a little while to come. So, I think, yeah. And she's so observant with those credits, Rob. I know, I know. Oh, yeah, you love a credit. You Love, love a credit. That's because I want my name yeah. on there one day. One day, Rue, <laughs> one day. Yes, um, but let us know in the let us know in the comment section what you think is going to happen here. How do you think Emma is going to go about her next move? Is Lexi going to want to keep her in her life? What's next? Let us know in the comments below. So on to the final story of the week, and this suddenly became the big story of the week, and it what didn't look like it was heading that way. There were some really nice surprises with this story this week. I speak, of course, of the Chelsea, Ravi, Denise, and by the end of the week, Suki storyline. This was exciting, wasn't it? I was loving this by the end of the week. Oh, oh my God, this was my absolute favourite, everything about it. Go on, yeah, let's start. This was really, really good. So, mm. obviously, um, Whitney and Zach decided to move out, so they've got the best yeah. chance of fostering. So, Chelsea's kind of left, kind of, like, well, I'm mean, sad to lose my mate as well, but also the rent needs paying, so I need someone to fill in. So, Ravi stepped forward, like, well, we're together. Clearly, the only solution here is for me and Nugget to move in, and then everything will be absolutely fine. Uh, and Ravi's rather determined to do this because... So Zach and Whitney are looking at buying the the, hat, the flat next to Stacey's. Obviously, Theo has bought that and put in way more than the asking price. By the way, talking about that flat that Theo has bought, 
I was noticing. Rent. Uh, yes. Do you see how much that cost? Do you see? Yeah, but do you see how much that cost? Oh yeah, how much was it? Now we sixteen hundred a month. That's pretty cheap for London. Oh, I would have thought, lot, though, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it is a geez. lot for London. One thousand six hundred pound a month. Who can afford that? That would include your bills, your council tax, all the rest of it. Well, I'd love to know yeah. also how how Whitney and Zach were planning on affording that. But I suppose you get a London living wage, don't you? Yeah, but even still, it's sixteen hundred. Jeez. No, anyway. it's ridiculous in London. Go on. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, so um, they all they they decide that they can move in next door because they can't originally afford the deposit. That's up for sale. Ravi sort of gives the money to Zach under the table, kind of keep keep that a secret, but you can have the money for the deposit. So they're, they're out the way uh, so that he and McNugget can move straight in. Denise, obviously, is not entirely thrilled about this prospect. Um, but there's not a lot she can do. Chelsea's decided that she's going to move Ravi in after a little bit of a hiccup, like, oh, is it too early? Is it too early? Yes, Chelsea, it definitely is. Uh, so but it's one thing to be moving in with your partner but then to be moving in with your partner and his teenage son that's another level altogether isn't yeah, it yeah and and her kid as well it is quite ex- yeah, yeah it's, it's quite a lot i love the fact that Fili- felix wasn't consulted once throughout all of this in fact I know, the, one what... me- the one mention of felix this week was when chelsea said oh i should maybe consult felix and whitney literally oh, shot, yeah. it, shot it down and was like no you're just making excuses you don't need to talk to felix felix will be fine <laughs> Like Felix just returns home and finds Ravi and Nugget just sat in his living room. Oh yeah, we live here now. Thanks. Cheers. Kicked right your bedroom as well. That was bigger. I fancied that one. <laughs> Why is it? I mean, what are they going to even? I know we're digressing, but what are they even going to do with Felix? It's not like he's yeah. just, he's a bit of a Bernie, isn't he? He's just like at the Albert every so often. I like... I want them to pay a bit of attention to it. I know there's a lot going on at the mm. moment, so but I would like them to kind of give Felix something to mm. do soon because he's he is he's he's got the potential to be a really, really good character. He's a good community mm-hmm. character and that's always important. Yeah. You know, like people mm-hmm. always forget, you know, when they when you know one of these lists that people throw out, oh these are the list of people I'd act. Um, and they always throw on the community characters and those things because they're not doing a lot to sort of be centre stage. And you mm. forget how important those community characters are to kind of keep the show looking normal, like, you know, a community. Um, but I think if it's, you know, Felix should have his time in the spotlight as well. I think it's time. I think he's done he's, yeah, he's done a good he's done a he's done a good treg as a mm. community character, but give him something to do. Bless him. Anyway, so they decide to have a housewarming party. Uh, so they invite the Panasars round and they invite Denise and Jack round. Now, they are all set to go to this party. Denise is like, right, fine, I'll make an effort. But she overhears Gina and Anna talking about the fact that oh, Ravi yeah. sold her drugs. That doesn't really go anywhere because Denise hasn't got any evidence and Gina's like, uh, I said nothing, sorry. So, <laughs> like, so Gina, and that's and that's realistic as well, isn't it? Like, you can, oh, there's yeah. no way that Gina's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, he, that's the guy that sold me drugs. Like, the last thing you would do in that situation, I would imagine. Yeah, so, definitely, especially with Ravi's character as well. Like, yeah, you'd be terrified, mind... wouldn't you? Now, meanwhile, Nugget is arranging music, and he ends up with Suki's laptop. Um, And he's putting music on there, and Ravi notices the laptop. Now, I'd completely forgotten where this footage was. And Ravi, the, the little bits of this didn't make a... Maybe I'm missing something. But he hmm. deleted this footage. So yeah. I don't know why he was so concerned that Nugget had the laptop. Because things aren't truly deleted, are they? Or I don't know. I, well, like we saw later on, it didn't take Ricky long, did it, to retrieve those documents? It didn't, but that's because he was specifically looking Specific- for stuff that had been deleted, you know? I think Ravi just freaked out, didn't he? Didn't yeah. even click that he was freaking out so much in front of everyone, which mm. obviously then made him appear guilty about something on the laptop, which shot yeah. himself in the foot. He just weren't thinking, I don't think. But yeah, no. if he did not made a big deal, no one would have found it, would they? And then he well, could no, have just yeah. exactly. hidden the laptop from sight ever again. He sends Nugget off in this drop because he snaps at Nugget. So Nugget's, Nugget's out of the way for what happens for the rest mm-hmm. of the rest of it. But I feel like Nugget's going to be a bit more centre stage in the coming weeks because this is all going to start to really sort of build up. Um, so Denise uh, kind of senses, what, why? Why are you annoyed about the laptop? So after her and Chelsea have roused, she storms out the house, but she takes the laptop. And mm. so she then goes to Ricky and goes, uh, right, anything that's deleted on there, find it. It's It's mine. It's my laptop, honestly, but find anything deleted on there. And like I say, I wasn't expecting this at all. It was just a great little twist at the end of the week that Denise ends up watching all of the footage from Ranveer's murder. 
absolute craziness. But one thing I need to mention yes. is why have they changed the colour back to the dress. the dress? Suki's dress. What is going on with the video, with the colour of Suki's <sighs> dress in that video? So originally when this happened and the scenes that we originally watched it, Suki was wearing a pink dress. Then we saw this video again in April and Suki's dress had been changed to her colour, which is blue. Blue. Now they've changed it back to pink again. So I don't really know what's supposed to be going on here. Whether the blue was maybe just a clue, like this is linked to it, and then they just forgot about it, or they were thinking that we weren't going to notice that they changed it in April, so they thought, well, we'll change it back again then, which makes it even more obvious that they changed it. I don't really know what the plan was here. I think I think that's what it is, <clears throat> what you've just said. They changed it, realised everyone kicked up a fuss and went, all right, we'll put it back to pink again. Now we've noticed that again. Yeah. But, so, Denise is watching this footage. Ravi realises the laptop's missing, goes around. I mean, this this led to an incredible Duff Duff on Wednesday. We were kind of like, what? what? How is this all going to play out? It was very exciting, Wednesday's episode. Uh, and then it just leads into utter madness because Ravi destroys the laptop. Got, he's got some money to pay to Suki there. I'd be livid, wouldn't you? Why have you destroyed my laptop? Um, and so Denise runs across and just, uh, who, and basically everyone is still there. And just spoiled out what she's seen. And the most incredible thing ever at that point happens is that everybody believes her. And this... I wasn't expecting that at first. This is the thing. I was fully expecting this to sort of then go into a few months where Denise is constantly kind of saying, no, I was, I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the truth. I know I've got no evidence, but this is definitely what happened. Like, look, you know, and just having everybody go against her and Chelsea not believing anything she said. But Chelsea instantly believed her, which I loved. It was kind of like mm. reveal, story then moves along in a new direction. Like, perfect. I'm, I don't expect it every time, but this was so, it felt so refreshing for it to be like that. It felt right because I think Chelsea were like, even my mum won't lie about something like this. Why would she make up seeing a video? I think Chelsea mm. were like, I know my mum well enough to know that yeah. she would not make up something this extreme. Yeah. But how awful was it when Chelsea, when you, when we saw Chelsea realising what, what's been going on? Like I, I actually felt so bad for yeah, her. Yeah, I mean, like, it was, that so, was well, so well played out. So well acted and so well played out, like you say. I mean, it was basically Chelsea realising that she had let another man like Grey into her life again and another man like Grey mm. near Jordan. And it was just, she was just, and she just reacted so viscerally. What's the word I'm looking, trying to say here? You know what I'm trying to say? Viscerally. Viscerally. Um, to it. And it was just, it was, it was just so well done. And Denise was kind of, I, th- I think Denise was as stunned as anybody else at Chelsea that everyone believed her. Um, yeah, and the other too. person that, the other person that believed her, of course, was Suki, who was standing there. And she had, she knew straight away that Denise was telling the truth because it's like, uh, why do you suddenly know what was in that video? Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, Denise then goes to reveal what else Suki didn't know was that Ravi uh, was actually the was... one that killed Ramvir. So all this time, Suki's believed that she killed someone. And now she actually can finally start to believe maybe it wasn't me. And the most exciting thing about all this was at the end of the week, Suki goes to Denise and goes, right, I believe you. And you now need to tell me exactly what you saw on that laptop. Eat. <laughs> this wow. is good. I think we're getting Suki's trailer next week. For sure. Ooh, we, yeah, must be getting, we must be yeah. getting Suki's trailer next week. I mean, this has thrown Ravi, this week threw Ravi right up to the top of the suspect list for the floor. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that Suki's had any kind of inclination that it were actually I don't Ravi think so. I think anything. Ravi had actually... No, I don't think so. I think Ravi had worked his magic absolutely fine because there was nothing to suggest mm. that Ravi had done anything else. Like, as far as she was concerned, Ravi had folded Ranveer into a suitcase and thrown him in the Thames or something. Uh, and she had no reason to believe that he had any mm. other additional part in his death. So for her now to realise that actually I left him alone with I left him alone with Ranveer and it's perfectly yeah, possible. True. And why would Denise suddenly lie about that? Mm. It's really, really, really interesting. And to be honest with you, the first time this week that I have doubted that it's anybody other than Nish on the floor. Well, I'm now thinking it isn't Nish because it's too obvious, but I don't know because we've just not seen Nish, have we? My mind changes every week, so I don't even really ask. This is anymore. why it's this is why it's so good. This storyline because you, I genuinely yeah, now am uncertain. The reason why I've always thought it's Nish, and no matter how many other red herrings I try and throw at it, the simple fact mm. of the matter is that a character like Nish can only surely be around for for yeah, so long. Shelf life. Once he finds out about Suki and Eve, that is surely we're mm. we're, we're surely then on the road to his exit. Surely, 
Because what else can he do? Couldn't you? What? Yeah. What? He's going to do something that lands himself in prison. Yeah. Anyway, that's the first thing himself, that you think at the least. Yeah. yeah or lands himself on the floor. floor. Exactly. So there is still a part of me that thinks it's definitely niche on the floor. But this week is the first time that it's all been a bit more unclear to me. Well, talking of Nish, Suki tried to confide in him as well and say, come on, do you think there's some truth yeah. in this? And then he, he's convincing Suki, look, we need to keep this under wraps. You don't want... What was that line he said about Kira? You know, do you want yeah. him to think that he got conned or do you want him to believe that he sacri- he, this sacrifice yeah. is worth it for his mom? Yeah, so he was well, basically... How manipulative are you? Man? I mean, like, that's Luckily, what, that's Suki what... don't buy yeah. it, but... God yeah, I mean, that's, that's Nish all over. And again, the reason why I think Nish is top suspect, but... You know what he was basically showing because we, clearly Nish believes what's what this new version mm. of events is. Like he knows full yeah, well yeah. that Ravi is capable of doing this. Like he is under no illusions that what Denise is claiming is probably what was seen on that laptop. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it's yeah, I mean the the development now between Nish and Ravi is going to be interesting. I can't yeah. wait to see how Suki reacts to at what she actually knows because she is going to be volcanic when she discovers what actually what Ravi has been hiding from her for months and months and months. Is she going to be volcanic there? What's the next yeah. move going to be? Well, she's the going only to be thing I did think, sorry, well, I was going to say, remember how Ravi hid the suitcase for her from Nish? Mm. He's got that hold over her, Ravi. Yeah. So how is she going to react to it or can she actually do anything? Oh, I don't know. Like, I feel like, yeah, because you've got to try and work out, like, who would she want to get rid of more, Nish or Ravi? Because there's still no illusion that she is unhappy in that relationship at all mm. you know we've had the few we haven't we've not really addressed the suki and Eve storyline for a few weeks now but there is there's still been the odd like look thrown between them like it's still clearly there yeah. um and she clearly still cannot stand nish and you know f- creep you know flinches whenever he touches her so it's who is she going to prioritize getting rid of more ravi or nish or is she just going to try and get rid of both of them i mean both a bit best option for her, wouldn't it? It Although, was. <laughs> can I say something controversial? Oh dear, go on then. I still write like Ravi, you know. I think oh he's yeah, he's a great character. <laughs> <laughs> misunderstood. I, I, he's a, I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's a, that was always Janine's defence. I'm oh, I just misunderstood. Um, I, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel like Ravi has more of a shelf life than Nish does. Because I think Nish oh, Ravi has got. Yeah. I, th- I do. I feel like he's he's more. I feel like. Don't get me wrong. I like Nish as a character, as a villain. You know, I think he's a great villain. But I feel like he's a little bit more single-minded in terms of his storylines than Ravi is. I feel like Ravi's got a few more layers to him than Nish has. Not mm. I, like again, nothing against Nish because I get what Nish is about and I get what his character and I get what his story path is about. But I feel like Ravi has more potential going forwards because Nish is a coercive controller, a manipulator, and a murderer. So there's only so long that a character like that can be around for. Now we know that mm. Ravi is a murderer, but he's also got a lot to him that makes him a little bit more of a good guy than Nish. He's kind of like a flawed. Yeah. He could be a bit of an anti-hero at times. So that's more interesting going forwards than mm. someone like Nish. You know what I mean? I know. And even when, you know, like when Ravi <laughs> when Ravi is committing crimes, he does it with the best intentions. Just... Like he were dealing drugs to Gina to make sure she yes. knew what she had with Oh, yeah, he's stuff. such a good guy. So... Such a good guy. Just admit <laughs> that you fancy Ravi and we'll move on. All right. Just admit it. Oh no, that... I don't, I don't at all. I literally do not at all. I just right. Think your boyfriend that... doesn't watch these, Ray. It's absolutely fine. You will never know. As I don't fancy. <laughs> Oh God, I nearly swore then. I don't fancy him. I just think that his character. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it You've is. You've seen his arms. What do you mean? You feel don't fancy sorry him? for him. He's got arms really like trees. Don't. He's got arms I like really trees. Don't. How do you not fancy him? Rubbish. I, I, just... I just feel <laughs> like he's yes. a bit like he's almost an accidental villain mm-hmm. in some ways. Yeah. Like the Ramvia thing. Like he wouldn't have gone out of his way to have done that. Mm. But he was in that situation because Suki thought she had. Mm. Then he wakes up and then he thought, well. Let's not bother. It's him on Ed. Talking of which, yes, Denise mm-hmm. goes in saying that you had him by the throat and killed him. That's not actually how he killed him. I think she was talking metaphorically. Like you, like, oh, I, right, I, right. yeah. I think she was. I think, yeah, um, yeah. I just can't wait to see how this how this all plays out because Ravi is now public enemy number one in terms of who the Panasars believe and who and Jack mm. and Chelsea. Like Chelsea's not going to take him back now, surely to God. So he's now very much isolated. And him and Nugget are can't live there now. So this is how's Nugget going to react to this? Because it's only so long that they can keep that from him. 
Ugh, can't wait. I'm so excited for next week. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. One last theory, though, on this. Yes. Chelsea and Jordan, are they going to ha- now have to move in with Jack and Denise because they can't afford the mortgage? And then will Emma move into their house? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? There's so much potential. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, But yeah, I mean, what? so if you had to say right now, it's Christmas Day tomorrow, and this is your final prediction. Go on, f- try, try your best. Who do you think it is, and who does it? Oh man! After this week, Ravi. But last week, I thought it was Theo. Mm. And I don't know why, but I think it might not be one of the six who does it. No, I don't think it's one of the six that does it either. I've thought mm. this for a while because I don't think that it was ever officially said by anybody. We're like, mm. It's been packaged that way, but it's one of the six. Mm. But I don't think it's ever been officially confirmed one of those six women kills the person that's on the floor. What if it's Eve in some kind of rainbow Maybe. get up? You know, <laughs> like with a... all of the colours? Because of like... all of the colours and oh, pride I thought, and, I thought you, you meant know? like in some sort of superhero, like super lesbian, <laughs> <that> comes in, <laughs> in the pride outfit. <laughs> well, actually, Rob... Maybe. Who... Can I just say, I've actually made a list of who I think all the suspects are. At the oh, moment. right. Would you okay. like to hear it? I would love to. Go on. Give us your theories. Right. These are, this is just a list of the people who could be on the floor. We've got okay. Nish. Yep. Rave. Yep. Theo. Yep. Rocky. Yeah. Jack, just because he's got the mm. cufflinks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Phil, which I don't think it will no, be. It won't, yeah, no. It won't be Phil. Um, Keanu. Yeah, possible. And Dean. This is a theory that's been thrown out quite a lot at the moment. There's a mm. video going online uh, on YouTube. It's done very well, by the way. I'm very jealous. Um, the, apparently, I haven't watched it because I don't want to ruin it for myself. When Kath, All those years ago, when Kathy first returned on the 30th, I remember seeing a load of stuff said online. Um, and it made such sense that the Kathy reveal was a little bit ruined for me. So I'm trying not to watch anything too in-depth yeah, yeah. at the moment about the theory so it doesn't spoil it for me. Um, there's a lot of people mm. thinking that it's Dean coming back at some point and mm. that it's going to be Dean on the floor because we are still very unclear as to how Linda is mixed up with all this. There's, not real, there's no real sort of reason as to why Linda would kill anybody at the moment. And obviously so, Shirley was seen with Dean in the background of a film, yeah, so, so why? why did that even get mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. possibly. There was, there was I a... I watched I watched five minutes of the video that you're talking about, and I stopped watching it because I was like, I don't want to know. <laughs> I want to yeah. keep guessing. The one thing yeah. I have seen that I really liked this clue was that so you know the individual promo pictures of the women, yeah, not the one where they're all together, not the iconic one where they're all together, mm-hmm. but there's like they've got their individual with all their coloured smoke around them. All of the women, apart from Linda, have got their hands on their hips in terms of like in like a defensive mode, an attacking mode. And Linda has her hands in front of her in a more vulnerable mode, which would possibly suggest that all the women are defending Linda from somebody. So that's interesting. Very interesting. I liked that. mm, I liked that as a clue. I can't remember who said mm, that online, but I I did like that when I saw that. So this this is what I love, though. And this is why this story is so amazing, because it sends the fans into complete and utter meltdown mode. They would notice anything. I saw somebody online talking about the balloons that were were up for um, Anna and Gina's party, because there was like balloons of different colours. And then there was two more balloons up there, so they were convinced that there's going to be an eighth. (laughs) Not only a seventh, but an eighth as well. Wow. Right. I love it. I love it. Right then. So that was this week's EastEnders. Uh, who's your gold star going to this week? Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, who does it go? Do you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to give it to Chelsea, actually. Oh, okay. Just yep. for that one scene and realisation alone. That, yeah, she was very, word. very good. That yeah, word. fair play. And I think yeah. I might give mine to Denise. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Then. So Chelsea and Denise are our gold stars this week. Let us know who you who your gold. Let me get my teeth in. Let me know who your gold stars to uh, in the comment section. Feel free. Uh, right then, we also have a little bit of gossip that has come out this week. Some big stories about some exits this week and a possible return. So let's get chatting about that. So play that spoiler siren because we have had an exit confirmed this week. Um, it has officially been confirmed by the show that Brian Connolly is leaving as Rocky Cotton. Now, 
This was not just revealed as any sort of normal announcement. First of all, this was leaked by Guess Who? The Sun, who were claiming oh. that Brian Connolly had had a massive falling out with producers uh, and that he'd left under a cloud and that he'd left them scrambling to rewrite a huge amount of stories leading up to Christmas and everything else that was going on. This then led to uh, the show making a statement saying that there was no truth in any of this. And Brian Connolly even then made a video saying that there was nothing going on. You get the sense that he's kind of leaving for maybe personal reasons, but that's got nothing to do with anybody else. Um, but apparently his exit has been in the works for many months. And you kind of get the impression, actually, that they were just trying to keep this a secret. And the sun has done its stuff yeah. again and ruined something for the viewers once again. So whoever mm-hmm. is doing that, I want them tied i want Gone. them on the, i want them on the floor christmas them on the day. floor christmas day. <laughs> put them on the floor christmas day i say ruining these stories for eastenders fans everywhere um but this is a shame um i am gonna miss rocky i have to say uh i think brian conley has been a real highlight i loved his relationship mm. with kathy i wasn't sure how much yeah. acting brian conley had ever done before but his time in eastenders has shown that he can bloody do it so it's oh, a real yeah. It's going to be a real shame to lose him, I think. But it's been, you know, said that he's been loved by the cast and crew. Uh, I don't know if the door has been left open. I haven't said anything like that. And apparently his exit's quite big. So, mm. obviously we have the calf fire coming up. I still think that he's going to be the guy that sets fire to the calf. Mm-hmm. Don't you? Any thoughts yeah, on Yeah, I this? do. Is it going to be that he gets trapped in there? Is it going to be that he flees because he gets caught for doing it? Which is yeah, pro- which I would think be in that's his very character rocky, as very well. Very rocky, yeah. yeah. I think it's quite likely. I mean, I like the idea of the fact that, you know, Nick set fire to the cafe all those years ago. So they're paralleling yeah, yeah. that with Rocky doing it. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, I yeah, think it's... it's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, but I, I like the idea of that. And I think Rocky going on the run is quite likely. I think they'd be. Yeah. A sh- I think they'd be kind of disappointed to lose him on a permanent basis. It's always nice to leave mm. the, the door open when they can. Um, mm. So yes, now, but the interesting thing here is where does this leave Kathy? Not only as a character, but where does it leave her within the six storyline? Yeah, this is what I was thinking. Why? Where, where does this leave Kathy? Like generally, she's just got married to the guy. But yeah, still don't understand her connection. Six storyline. I feel hmm. like the fire week is going to be Kathy's week with the six storyline. I feel like if we're going to get Kathy's oh, yeah, trailer at any point, that will be the week it happens. Mm. So maybe it isn't Rocky that sets fire to the cafe, but somebody else, and that will then give Kathy 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 a cafe. motive. <laughs> Uh, that will then mm. give her a motive. But it seems likely that Rocky... It's the sort of thing he'd do, isn't it? Like, yeah. to get the insurance money, because they're now scrambling for coins to pay the loan back from the money mm. that Joe wanted. So, I feel... Mm, but it's a shame to lose Rocky. I really, I'm really, going to be sad to lose him. But screw you, the son. All right? Just stop it. No one cares about your reports. Stop saying the name. We don't care. Leave us alone. <laughs> Just let us enjoy the show. Let the show work. And, the show is uh, working its arse off at the moment to keep the show as interesting as it can be. You're just wrecking stop, it. Stop it. Stop spreading lies as well. Like, oh, everyone I mean, seem like they don't get on. Like, get a life, honestly. Oh, like, uh, uh, it just annoys me. Mm. Um, but, so we've got that. To, well, we've got that to look forward to because it suggested that this is going to be big when Rocky leaves. Mm. So look forward to that i guess but where this is all going to go god only knows at this stage it's very very exciting um but as one door closes another door has reopened because we have had reports that kim metcalf is back filming as sam yes at last i'm very excited to see sam again please i don't know how this is going to go down with the ricky and co uh, especially if he's like changing his name and stuff so i wonder if it's all going to be linked into that and She's it's, coming back because she didn't yeah. want him to change his name or who knows, something it's like that. It's interesting when she's coming back. Because if she's back filming mm. now, then that leaves it another six weeks before we might see yeah. her again. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting time of year for her to be returning, sort of in the mm. run-up to Christmas. So what, she'll mm. be probably back around the maybe the end of October, start of November. November. Mm. So that's the and by the time November comes around, they're going to be building up like crazy to the following month. Mm. All sorts of big wild stuff happening. So, what's Sam involvement going to be in this? This is, this is oh, I don't know. I want to know, but I don't want to know. It's all. Yeah. I know. Where's Sam going to live? That's all I think about. Well, where is Sam going to live? Gonna the, live? <laughs> yeah, where is Sam going to live? Because at the moment, Alfie lives in her flat. Alfie, and I don't yeah. think she know. I don't think she knows that yet. So no. <laughs> that's going to be fun when she returns back and essentially finds squatters in her flat. That's going to be fun. Oh, I can't wait. I love Sam. I'm so pleased she's back because she's been missed. She really, really has. Because yeah, Sam was 
Than was um, was just iconic during her last mm-hmm. her last tenure. So I'm delighted that she's returning. But yeah, I mean, please throw all your comments uh, about theories and everything in the comment section below because the show is just throwing so many kind of threads and questions out at the moment, which is making my brain hurt. I don't know where we go from here. It's so exciting. Very, very, very good. Uh, so we shall now read some comments from you guys. Um, we had lots of emails uh, last week, which we frankly forgot to read out because <laughs> we're that good and we're really professional at our job. Um, I will go first to uh, Claire Radigan, who sent us an email that said, the Warford police would never be mistaken for Scotland Yard. Such a coincidence. Theo being accused of stalking another woman. But again, it's her word against his. Now he's moving to the square. I noticed William Ellis, who plays Theo so convincingly, joined the EastEnders cast on stage at the National Television Awards. I think he and this storyline will be around for a while. I'm sure Ree caught the Christmas clue uttered by Nish, perhaps the victim, to Ian. I can't afford to get into bed with someone who's likely to stab me in the back. Could he unknowingly be referring to Suki? Interesting choice of words indeed. Your Cindy Return podcast covered all the angles and characters and was terrific. Best regards from across the pond. Thanks, Claire. Um, Thank you. You love a you love a clue like that, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so I did. I actually did notice it at the time and then didn't think to write it down in my notes, but yeah. A very good point to uh, remind us all of that he said mm. that. Mm-hmm. It's still, yeah, I mean, Nish is, you can't remove Nish from any suspect list right now. No. You really can't. It's, yeah, so we'll have to wait and see. Go on, next comment. So this one's an Instagram comment, uh, sorry, a DM from Mustafa Ahmed, who says, hi guys, just a quick one. Wednesday's episode, when Denise was looking for music, she said D'Angelo. Now the actor who plays Dean is Matt D'Angelo. I heavily feel like this was a hint to the Christmas Day murder, especially as two of the six were in that scene. Yeah, Ooh. it's very, it's very meta. I did notice this. It's very meta, mm. but it's yeah. the sort of mad clue that, uh, frankly, the state the show has left the fans' minds in at the moment that we're going to go crazy over. Uh, and yeah, a possibility. I just, mm-hmm. don't, I don't know. I feel like there's a part of me, I have to say, that sort of feels like it's spent, we've spent so many months now building up like everything to do with Ravi and Nish and all and Theo and all that kind of thing. But then for Dean to sort of slip in the door, the back door, this late in proceedings and to be the body mm. on the floor, I don't know. I'm sure they do it well, but I feel like maybe it's a, I don't know, is it a bit late when you do some brand new thing, in, a thing into it? I don't know. What do you think? I think there's time, yeah. We're only in September. Yeah. So as long as they did, I'd say as long as they did it like next month, mm. then it'd be possible. It'd have to be soon. Thing. Like you say, otherwise, who's Linda's person? Why is Linda involved? There's no the real only... reason. And Sharon as well on Linda's behalf. You know? Yeah, I mean, Sharon, you could argue, you can see something mad happening with her and Keanu in the next yeah. in the next few weeks. So maybe, she, you know, Sharon's thing, and maybe even with Phil, you know, because mm. Phil's always at the top of the suspect list for any sort of whodunit, so why not throw him into this one? Um, so, yeah, maybe Keanu as well, you know, with Karen leaving as well. You know, you sort of have to oh, wonder yeah. what Keanu's going to do over the next few, next few months, mm. and maybe that's a possibility. Um, I don't know. I would just, I maybe I would feel a little bit cheated if like Dean walks in at the start of December and we spent all this time kind of trying to theorize everything else and it just turns out mm. to be Dean on the floor. I don't think they would do that. I think it's, I think it's all been laid too well for it to be like that. Mm. Um, I don't know. We'll have to I wait know what you're and saying see. There. Mm. Mm. Interesting though. Um, we had another email from Brandon Reed who brings up something that I forgot to mention earlier, which was, "Hey Robin Reed, hope you are well. Is it just me or has Jay's behaviour this week felt a little strange? I was expecting a massive reaction to seeing Emma return. Honestly, expected him to either have a breakdown or at least get extremely angry. Ben seemed to do all the things I thought Jay would do this week, and when we did see Jay, he seemed unfazed by any of the events." Uh, either the writing for Jay has taken a little bit of a decline or there is some kind of story building up for him. We did see him walking out in the night so maybe he's kind of numb to any more trauma other than Lola. Maybe he's completely emotionless due to grief or something. Not entirely sure. What are your thoughts? Would love to hear them. Well, let me tell you. Um, yeah, something going on with Jay. We forgot to mention this. He was, mm-hmm. he's apparently been seen like leaving the, leaving the underground at like five o'clock in the morning by Mitch. So mm. he's up to something. You can kind of, you can, we kind of suspected last week he was struggling. Yeah. So whatever he's doing to cope with it would apparently be this. I'm not going to comment because I've seen a spoiler about this, which I'm very annoyed I, at that I've seen. I've seen a spoiler as well. So really, if neither mm. of us are going to mention this, this is an entirely pointless conversation. However. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, it's possibly that uh, there's a picture yeah. going around of a new character yeah. who we yes. will uh, be learning more about over the coming weeks, I suspect. But I mm-hmm. think that might be it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's understandable. 
it's an understandable direction for them to take Jay in if this is what it looks like. Um, so I should look forward to that because Jamie Borf looks amazing and I look forward to seeing him dealing with all the grief and stuff. Yeah, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. Um, right, so lots of comments this week. Uh, please keep them coming in and you can do that by doing any of the following. You can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark, on Instagram and Twitter at E20 After Dark. You can like and subscribe on our YouTube channel, Albert Square After Dark, and find us on all your favourite podcast sites. Drop us an email at e20afterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to, you can buy us a coffee by going on buymeacoffee.com forward slash E20 After Dark. Beautifully rhetoric as per usual. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, I mean, it looks all to be kicking off next week. We've got the wedding. We've got the Suki and Ravi stuff. I can't wait. It's going to be very, very good. Uh, we will we'll be here next week to discuss all the fallout from that. So make sure you are there. Until then, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. See ya. See ya.